And red today is not just for Memorial Day. It also happens to be the day of Pentecost. Uh, now, this year I chose not to use the sort of familiar traditional uh, Acts chapter 2 uh, scripture for today, but I chose what I'm just going to admit to you this morning is one of my favorite stories in the whole Bible. <clears throat> so turn with me, if you will, to Ezekiel chapter 37. The hand of the Lord came upon me, and he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord and set me down in the middle of a valley. Now, I want you to just think about that for a moment. Now, Ezekiel doesn't really give us any clue. He doesn't really specify where he starts or even what he's doing when this happens to him. Now, this is a vision but we can assume he probably was in prayer. I certainly hope that he wasn't standing in line uh, at the checkout stand at the grocery store or uh, doing some other mundane task and all of a sudden finds himself swept away by the Spirit of the Lord. But whatever is happening, suddenly Ezekiel finds himself in this vision, whisked away to some other location and set down in a valley. And that valley was full of bones. Now I'm not sure whether for you that is so much of a vision or a dream or a nightmare, but set down in this, in this valley filled with bones. And he led me all around them. There were very many lying in the valley, and they were very dry. And he said to me, mortal, can these bones live? Now, I was trying to think of, of an example that might bring this idea to life for you. And this isn't, this isn't the best example, I don't think. But imagine if you will. Most of us are familiar with... Um, the, the kind of furniture that you buy in a box and you bring home and you put it together. Whether you buy it at, at Ikea or Walmart or wherever you, you buy it. Now imagine somebody buys thousands of these kits of furniture and unpacks them all so that they're not sealed together and, and all of the bolts and screws are out of their little bags and everything is, is out and then flies over the Grand Canyon in a plane and drops them all into the Grand Canyon. And then a voice comes to you and says, buddy, can you put these all together? I mean, have you ever tried to put together one of those kits with the instructions that unfold like a map? And often the words are in a different language I mean, it's hard enough when you have the directions and you have everything gathered there in front of you, but imagine being in the Grand Canyon with pieces scattered everywhere and who knows where those little screws and bolts and things end up. And here is Ezekiel in this valley with bones scattered everywhere. Now notice it doesn't say skeletons. It says bones because these aren't even skeletons. These, these have been picked at by, by buzzards and hyenas and who knows what all, and the, there is no flesh. They are bleached and dry, and the bones are scattered. There, there's a skull over here. There's a tibia over here and a femur over there. I mean, they're just scattered everywhere. And God says to Ezekiel, Buddy, I'm looking at these bones. Can these bones live? Now, from my perspective, my immediate answer is, you must be crazy. Absolutely not. From a human perspective, there is no way these bones have any life left in them. 
But Ezekiel recognizes a trick question when he hears it. And so he answers, oh Lord, you know. I mean, essentially what I think Ezekiel is saying is, um, you're asking me? If, if you don't know the answer to this question, I certainly don't know the answer to this question, but I think you know. Then God says to Ezekiel, prophesy to these bones. Now, <laughs> there, there's a call every pastor wants to hear. I want you to, to preach to a whole bunch of dead people. And they're not, I've used this one before, but they're not simply merely dead. They're really quite sincerely dead. <laughs> Prophesy to these bones and say to them, O oh, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, I will cause breath to enter you and you shall live. I will lay sinews on you and, you will, and will cause flesh to come upon you and cover you with skin and put breath in you and you shall live and you shall know that I am the Lord. So Ezekiel prophesied as he had been commanded and as I prophesied suddenly there was a noise. Now again imagine this scene. Ezekiel standing in this valley Bones scattered everywhere, not another living soul in sight. And he's being told by God, I want you to preach to this valley. I want you to preach to these bones. Now I'm sure in his mind he's thinking, this is about the craziest thing I've ever done. But okay. And he begins to prophesy. And so he's preaching. And then there's this, this noise this rattling sound. And he, he looks around and, and the bones came together, bone to bone. I looked and there were sinews on them and flesh had come upon them and skin had covered them. So as he's preaching, as he's preaching, these, these bones start to, to move. To, to come together in skeletons. And then once the skeletons are formed, then, then sinews and muscles and skin. I mean, this would make a pretty good horror movie. Uh, it sounds a little gross if you really think about it, but it all comes together. But there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, Prophesy to the breath. Prophesy, mortal, and say to the breath, Thus says the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain that they may live. I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived and stood on their feet a vast multitude. So God takes these dead, dry, bleached bones. He brings them together. He covers them and brings them, breathes into them the breath of life. Then God said to me, mortal, these bones are the whole house of Israel. But we might read that these bones represent the people of God. They say, our bones are dried up and our hope is lost. We are cut off completely. Now, doesn't that sound a little bit familiar? Don't, don't you feel sometimes that you're dried up? You're exhausted? You've got nothing left therefore prophesy and say to them thus says the Lord God I am going to open your graves 
and bring you up from your graves, O my people, and I will bring you back to the land of Israel, and you shall know that I am the Lord. When I open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people, I will put my spirit within you, and you shall live. And I will place you on your own soil, and you shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken and will act, says the Lord. Wow! I agree. There are two things that, that I really want you to take away from this story. The first is that, that God was the original recycler. I mean, we live really in a very disposable society. Doesn't matter whether you're talking cars or computers or other appliances, they are built to last this long. And then we throw them out and we get new ones. And to be honest, Ezekiel, when he sees this valley of dry bones, if he is anything like the rest of us human beings, we would look at it and think, what is the point? Why are you even bringing me here? I mean, these bones are way past their expiration date. These bones have nothing left to give. Just bury them and be done with it. I mean, our attitude would tend to be, let's start fresh. Let's start new. Let's, let's just create something else. But God, God doesn't do that. God sees the potential where we can't see any potential. God takes those bones and he brings them back to life. He renews them. He refreshes them. He, he recreates life where there was no life. I mean, that in itself is amazing. But then I began to think, how did these bones do it? I mean, they were dead. They were dried up. How, how did they manage to come back to life? They didn't. The bones did nothing. It was all the power of God. God called a man to prophesy, to prophesy to these bones. But it was the power of God that brought them new life. It was the power of God that gave them new hope. Now we are Presbyterians. And it has been my experience that we Presbyterians kind of feel like that when it comes to the Holy Spirit. It makes us uncomfortable. And I, I think part of that is we are a people who are known for doing things decently and in order. And it has been my experience that the Holy Spirit does not do things in the way that we would consider decently and in order. He does unexpected things. And you just kind of have to, to go with the Spirit. We don't really like that. We like to have a, a plan. We like to have an order of service. We like to have everything laid out for us so we know what's coming and we know how to prepare for it. Unfortunately, if we live life, we discover life doesn't work that way either. We can make all the plans we want, but life doesn't always follow our plans. And that leads us to feel like the people of God described here. 
Our bones are dried up. Our hope is lost. Now, there are many reasons. Some of us think or believe we're too old. We've put in our time. We've done our thing. There's not much left for us to do. Some of us have health issues. We don't get around as easily. Or maybe we're laid up because uh, we've, we've had an operation or, or we have some illness. Some of us are just plain tired out. We go through the day. We go to work. By the time we get home, we've got no energy left. And the idea of that God could have anything for us to do, that, that God could work through us, seems very foreign to us. I mean, for one thing, I couldn't possibly fit another thing on my plate. But even if I could, I, I, don't, have, I don't have the energy. I don't have the time. I don't have... You fill in the blank. But whatever your situation, whatever circumstances you find yourself in, my guess is you are not as far gone as the bones in this valley. I mean, the bones in the valley, we're, we're not even talking raising Lazarus from the dead. Now, we've talked about that before. Lazarus in the tomb four days. From a Jewish mindset, three days was the expiration. You, you, you could raise a person back to life within the first three days after they died. After three days, pff, they're gone. He's in the grave four days. Jesus brings him back to life. Even Lazarus, not as far gone as these bones in this valley. Dead, dried up, no flesh, scattered. So whatever your circumstance, I don't think it is as far gone as the bones in the valley. And God says, I can breathe life into those bones. Certainly, I can breathe life into you. You see, that's, that's the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is that which fills us, which energizes us, which, which gives us the ability to do things that are beyond what we believe our abilities are. You see, that's often when we know that God is calling us to something. When, when we look at something and we think, wow, I would really like to do something about that, but that is way beyond me. That just might be God. See, God understands. God understands that, that you, are, you are tired. You're weak. You've put in your time. But he still has a purpose for you. He still has work he wants to do through you and in you. And it is the Holy Spirit that will pull you back together, that will give you life and strength and hope. That's what the Spirit is all about. And God wants you to be able to live life and live it abundantly. And so we may feel like old, bleached, dried out bones. But God can give us flesh and he can breathe the spirit of life into us and use us. And so I stand here today as a prophet to say that God will breathe life into you. That the Spirit of God will fall upon you in a new way. 
to encourage and strengthen and send you out to do whatever it is he's calling you to do, whether it's something you're doing at the moment or not. He will give you life and energy and hope and purpose because that's what God is all about. And he does it especially when we feel the most incapable, when we feel the weakest, when we feel the most unlikely candidate for God to use because then, as he said here, then you will know that I am God. Then you will know that it is me who is doing it and not you in your own strength. And then, and then we will worship him and give him the honor and the glory. Amen.